about the unfortunate explosion that rocked Ibadan, Ojo State's capital, on Tuesday. More bodies have been recovered from the site. A sniffer dog detected a man in the rubble, and security agents moved him to moved him to the hospital for medical attention. The special advisor to, on, to the state governor of security, that Mr. Fatai Oshini, said rescue operation is still ongoing days after. Well, this clearly shows that uh, we cannot say for sure the number of casualties. Honestly. We don't have uh, figures. We are being told now that uh, more bodies have been discovered. Maybe some other people are missing. That we cannot. Uh, some people are still looking for their loved ones. Yes. And uh, you can imagine how many hundreds of people that are traumatized for the fact that you have a child in uh, Ibadan and you cannot locate him. You know, you want to call him, you cannot get him during that incident. You can imagine how the kind of trauma you are going to pass through. And we also read online that uh, one uh, manager of, a, of an hotel yeah. died of shock, bon. Bon. you know. So this thing, you know, is, 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 a, is a very big problem. Because Ibadan is an ancient city, and there are a lot of us in the southwest, we have a kind of spiritual attachment to that city. I don't think there's any family in the southwest that hasn't got a relation, a family living in that uh, place. So when you attack, so you are attacking the heart, you know, of a people. And I, I think there are so many things that we're still waiting you know, for that are yet to be unfolded. You know, who are the people responsible? Whether the company is legitimate or not, you know, has anybody been arrested? Are there other explosives being kept somewhere? We are told that these uh, this explosion, uh, explosives are for mining. The people at the Wajowa, have they ever had such explosions when mining activities go on? Do they hear such explosions when mining activities go on? My own community, you know, I'm from a state where there's also mining. I've never heard where people talk about this kind of uh, explosion. If they actually use this thing, this thing's on mining sites. So I think, and from what we are hearing now, you know, there is a big, there's a huge market, you know, for uh, minerals, you know, Strabag International Market in Ibadan. So it's, you know, people come from all the way from West Africa to do a lot of things here. So it's not as if the government is not aware. And I was reading the papers that the advisor to the governor was saying that they are waiting for the owner of the house to come up and identify himself. And I asked myself, does it mean there, is no, there are no records of houses? I can understand Bere, Agungu, those slums. But Bodiga, does it mean you don't have records of those who own those buildings? Does it mean that is, what is the land registry? Like I mean, yeah, so you don't know who owns this building. Because I, I was thinking that within seconds, you just press your button and then you know who owns this house, you know, on this street. So there are so many unresolved uh, issues. I'm particularly not also happy about the response of our political leadership. When the, the incidents happened in Kaduna, the Northern Caucus, within the shortest time, few days they were there. They donated, I think the House of Rep donated 48 million. The senators, Northern Caucus in the Senate, donated 109 million. The Sultan made a statement, you know, what has happened to our own political leaders here? I was expecting that by now, the House of Assembly in, in uh, you know, Augustine will have, you know, come with the rules to, at least to suspend mining, not to ban it for a moment, because people have lost their lives. And, you know, the kind of attitude, I mean, the, the political leadership is not providing the kind of empathy that, you know, that I expect them to provide. And I think uh, I'm, I'm really not impressed by the way we are handling this issue. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate. He, I mean, he bad off. Very, very important city in Nigeria. I mean, look at such a thing happening in the middle of Ibadan. Imagine what people could be up to in places like Lagos, with the population of Lagos and other densely populated cities. So uh, all the allegations coming out of the uh, incident need to be investigated. That, him, that uh, is a Malian who was storing explosives, who was already storing explosives that he was being protected by police. All these things are just being glossed over. Nobody is actually addressing it to come out and say, is it, this is true or this is false? And we cannot just keep getting piecemeal information, piecemeal information. How long has it taken that by now we don't have a comprehensive information? As in, Inspector General of Police ought to by now, or even National Security Advisor ought to by now have addressed a world press conference, because this is a major disaster. 
Imagine if something like this, God forbid, that yes, happened. Casualties. If something like that happened in a densely populated yes. area, mm -hmm. for how many years? Do you know how many years you keep recovering? You mm. keep recovering casualties. It shows that we don't place maximum value on human lives, and this should not be allowed to go away. I would think that really, the, the, it's up to the political leadership of the Southwest. It's not just the House of Assembly in uh, or your state. Yeah. The six states of, this, of, of, of the Southwest, they should have got together and visited that site. Mm. Because don't forget the importance, the significance of Ibadan to the Western region, the significance of Ibadan to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the history of the Southwest. By now, they should have you know, really showed empathy. Those who have lost their loved ones, where are the hotlines for people that people can contact? Who are who? Where are the trauma teams? Do you just see pictures of you know work just going on? But where are those? Where are those canopies? Where are those purpose-built, uh, purpose-built canopies for you know to attend to trauma victims, to take phone calls, to reassure people? This is the 21st century. We should stop doing things as if we don't see the rest of the world doing how they had the rest of the world hand those disasters. This thing is a monumental disaster. And it's unfortunate. Look at where it happened. Look at where it happened. Where the elite, the elite live. That's where this thing happened. It affected a former deputy governor. So you can imagine, who are talking about the other people, what, what they are going through. I, I, I really sympathize with them. It's, it's, it's such a very painful incident. And I think there should be immediate action from political leaders Southwest, including National Assembly, the Southwest Caucus in National Assembly, they should rise up and move straight to a burden by tomorrow. Tomorrow or Tuesday, they should move straight to the scene and be seen to be talking so that, you know, it's just about empathy, showing empathy so that the people, you say, oh, okay, you came late, but at least you came to show, you know, to sympathize with us and then let the loose ends be tied. Julia was asking you about Akiri before we went to this Ibadan explosion. Akiri is 87. Yes. <laughs> we thank God for his life. He's never falling sick. I do not remember him going to hospital at any time. And I know my mom once said that uh, he, the time that he falls sick, maybe that's the day he will die. Because since they got married, he has never fallen sick. He has never received an injection in his life. So he doesn't know what uh, it looks like to sleep in hospital for one day. He's just a blessed uh, person and uh, he doesn't look his age at all. You know, so but we give God the glory for sparing his life and for enabling him to even ascend the throne of his forefathers at such a ripe age. Mm. All right, let's go to Ibadan explosion now. Are you impressed in any way with the response level that you've seen so far? First and foremost, I am disappointed in the security agencies. There is sufficient evidence that the main suspect was reported by people living in the area not once, not twice, but no action was taken. These illegal um, miners who are from French West African countries live in Ibadan and many of our cities. They rely so much on uh, improvised explosive devices to smash rocks and to get to um, the gemstones that they want but you cannot keep improvised explosive devices in residential areas the result of that is what we have seen because he buries these things in his uh, in, the, in the house where he lives so that when, when he's going to the mining site he will take some of the explosive devices and then go and use at the mining site. But don't like many of our, our communities, or you like many of our states, is very rich in uh, gemstones and minerals, 
mineral resources like lithium, you know, even gold in the Tesiwaju local government. But aliens and other unscrupulous elements are the people making money off these uh, uh, minerals. In uh, Chinese, the Chinese, for example, are mining gold illegally in Oshun states, where three local governments are especially rich in gold. They are mining gold illegally. Community leaders are conniving with them. Security forces are conniving with them. Regulatory authorities in Abuja and other places are conniving with them. I remember when we did a documentary on how the Chinese have damaged our communities, dug holes everywhere. Because in Oshun, you need to dig up to 80 to 100 meters before you, you can see gold. They've caused lakes and all kinds of uh, devastation to the communities. And nobody's doing anything about it. People who are convicts back in their countries, they come to our country and mine our mineral resources illegally. We have permitted them to do this for so long. Now we are paying with our lives. It's unfortunate that this had gone on for so long in all your states. And nobody tried to stop. Because when you report people and the authorities don't take action, those people become stronger. The people who reported them will then pull, pull back because they know that they could pay for even uh, making such reports in the final analysis. So that's why this happened in Ibadan. And in a prime area, for that matter, where a piece of land goes for up to 70 million in Naira. So it is unfortunate, and the way we respond to disasters in our country, we need to improve. How can police trucks be evacuating the wounded, the injured, from the site, it should be ambulances for God's sake. Ambulances and care, I mean, uh, uh, caregivers who are trained to handle people in such uh, situations. Not, not policemen. That's why the chances of, of survival for our people is always limited when we don't even handle them the right way uh, when they are in, in such a vulnerable uh, position. There is, no, there is nothing that government can do at this stage than to support the people who have lost their belongings. Look at the famous lawyer, Nii Akintola. He has lost his hotel. I learned that even Bola Ige's house in that place was also destroyed, including uh, the late uh, um, Governor Akre Dolu. Prominent people lost their homes, people's investments. Some of them will never recover from this. Unless government moves in quickly to try to help them, some people will commit suicide. So we have to stop this Ibadan. Now, this one is an eye-opener. We must make sure that it doesn't happen again anywhere else. An eye-opener. I will keep um, tab on that um, particular incident. And we, at the end of the day, we will look at the number of casualties that will be recorded because all the figures we've been getting, if they are still recovering dead, dead bodies mm -hmm. from the rubbles. The so miners of Syria Nigeria is claiming that this company being mentioned is it's, it's not a member of the association. That's what they will say. That this 297 kind of countries country is registered by the uh, mining ministry, this company is not part of them. So is, this is a pure case of illegal miners who are just doing anything that they feel they have to do. And have to consider the impact on biodiversity, on, you know, emission of... Uh, Radioactive waves and the impact on people, on public health. These are very serious issues that we are just waving aside. The densely populated area. All right. Now.